Hello, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and on this video I wanted to talk about Equivocate. Equivocate is a new plugin by Newfangled Audio and Eventide. It is a linear EQ that's geared more towards mastering, but obviously can be used in any situation that you want. As you can see here, it has a full preset manager and comes with quite a few included presets, so you can use them between different hosts. And then it's also kind of cool, it has a compare feature. So you can jump between testing different settings if you would like to. And then the info button here pulls up the manual, which I highly recommend going through. And then the meters button here, the meters do run by OpenGL. So if you uh, don't have a dedicated graphics card, the CPU can take a pretty hard hit. So if you have to, you can disable the metering. Now it'll just disable the meters here. It won't disable your input and output meters. So, and then another way you can um, reduce some of the, the CPU needs of the plugin is to reduce some of the bands. So it starts out uh, default at 26 bands, so you could reduce it to less bands if you wanted to. And then over here, it has some different views or skins, if you will. Then over here, another thing I've grown to really like is this active button. So this is kind of like a built-in bypass feature of the plugin. And what I like about it is if you use the regular bypass in Pro Tools, it'll kind of stutter in time a little bit. Whereas if you use the active button, your playback will continue to be smooth. So let me demo that real quick. So it just makes it easier to jump back and forth and listen to the processed and non-processed version. So over here on our input and output sections, uh, during playback, the peaks are the ticks you see and the RMS is the solid bars. And then you have a peak hold up here at the top. And then up here you have the plug-in input level. And then over here on the output side, the metering is identical. The ticks are your peaks, the solid bars is your RMS, and then you have your peak hold up here. Now here the big difference is um, we can do the drop down and go into manual, and we can see our output settings are identical to what they are on the input side but we do have an automatic setting here. So what automatic does is basically just work to keep your input and your output process levels of the audio the same. So if you do something like a jump back and forth with active on and off, your output levels will not change. Now, if you just turn that off, now what happens is there's no protection on the output side. Um, it'll just output basically relative to whatever your gain settings are. Now up here in the auditory filter bank section, the first drop down is how many bands of processing you'll be using. Like I said, it defaults at 26, but you can drop it down to less. And then you have what's labeled as Mel and Custom. So what this does is this dictates the spacing between the bands. So Mel keeps everything even. Your spacing between all of the bands is the same. Now if you was to come down here and grab and change the peak frequency of any of the bands, you can see it instantly jumps over here to custom because you are modifying it. Then if you just wanted to reset them, anything like that, you can just hit Mel and they will go right back. Now that takes us down here into the discussion of what they call peak frequency. A lot of EQs, this would be called the center frequency, but this is a little different. But as you see, you can drag it around and it tells you where the band is centered at. So when you, um, change the setting, drag the gain up and down for that frequency, you can kind of see the frequency range in which it will be affecting by the gain settings. 
And so the one thing to be aware of is if you do get heavy handed, which I can't imagine maybe outside of sound design or something doing uh, something pretty crazy. If you drag these um, peak frequencies, you can see it starts affecting a lot of the frequencies around it. In this case, I drug it so far that now we have all of these bands here sitting at the same peak frequency. So just know if you do get heavy handed with it, it can basically just start pushing bands out of the way, in which case it might be a better choice to drop to less bands, uh, something like that. And then over here, we can um, individually turn on and off the input and output meters. The input meter, uh, in this case, is represented by the blue turquoise color here, which will be on the left side. And the yellow will be the output gain. It's like a revolving door. And then right below that, you can solo bands if you want to. And if you hold shift, you can solo multiple bands at once. And then right below that, you can see a plus and minus sign. So if you hit the plus, it will add a new band right beside it. And if you hit subtract, it will delete that band. And then over here on the far right side, we got reset gains and draw curves. Reset gains is pretty obvious. So however we have our stuff set, if we hit reset, it'll just reset the gains to zero. And then down here with the draw curve, um, what I just kind of demoed, you can grab a band like that and just swipe your mouse across and draw it in. Otherwise, if you have that shut off, that does not work. And then the other thing I wanted to look at is the match EQ settings here. So I'm sure a lot of us are aware of other processors that have the ability to match EQs. So basically it takes some sort of an incoming signal. Um, I guess you could say it kind of steals the EQ settings off of that and then applies them to the EQ here. So it affects your source audio. So a lot of people use it in ways to match tonalities, uh, you know, on a project from song to song. If you're trying to get your song to sound like, you know, a little more like someone else's, it's a way to kind of experiment, work with, and try to match uh, th that e those EQ settings. So in this case, uh, we're using a key input. So I have another track here. And if you're not aware of how to set up a key input, I just have uh, this track with a bus output. And I have that set to a pre-fader send. And then I just muted that track or you could turn it down, whatever you wanna do, cause I do not wanna hear this track in the output of my mix. And then inside of Equivocate, I just select uh, this bus send up here in the key input. And then if you come over here and turn on match EQ um, and hit playback. So you can see over time how it starts to average out and gets all of the filters set. And the next thing uh, to, to pay attention to is our percentage setting under here. Now I'm sure this probably makes sense that when it's set to 100%, it's the full power of those EQ settings are being applied. And you can obviously drag that down to make them a little more subtle if you want to, if you don't um, want the changes that drastic. And then what's kind of cool, uh, when you get down to a zero here, now you can see all of the settings zeroed back out, but they're not lost. You can just go right back up to 100%. But as you start to go below zero, it actually inverts the EQ settings. So uh, just as example, uh, this very last band here at 20K is set to 2.3, a positive 2.3 dB when we are set to negative. Now, if we take this and go back to a full 100%, we can see that it's actually a negative 2.3 dB. So this just completely inverts the signal. When you have the settings where you want them, so say I wanted them a little more subtle somewhere in here, at this point you still can't change any of the actual fader settings. So what you can do is shut off match EQ. And now again, you have full control of all the settings if you wanna make any changes, anything like that.
Overall, I think it's a pretty cool plugin. I think the 26 bands is probably overkill for what we're used to working with and, you know, four six band EQs, but if four or six is good, then 26 must be better. And then just to be aware, um, like I was talking about earlier about this being more of a mastering processor, not a plug-in processor, is that um, we can see here with uh, one instance of it, it has 3,583 samples of latency on it, so it's obviously not a tracking EQ of any sort, uh, but it definitely feels like uh, more of a boutique EQ for selective purposes rather than just a standard EQ you throw on every track that are obviously also much quicker to set up. But I do like the plugin, and I think it should probably get a couple extra bonus points for its name. Thanks for watching the video, and any questions or comments, hit us up on our website. Thank you. Mm -hmm.